another edition of MLB DFS Quick Hit. It's your Wednesday, June 27th edition. Got an 11 game slate on tap. Hopefully, everybody's Tuesday went well as we had a couple nice, nice calls there. It worked out well. And again, the Slack chat, we hit another one as we looked at lineups and talked about value and whatnot. So it worked out really, really well. So come uh, join us there and uh, see what it's all about. It's a lot of fun. People are doing pretty well here the last few days. So uh, it's baseball. It's a wave. It's good. It's bad. It's a lot of fun. And it's a grind. But uh, we got an 11 game slate, like I said, on tap. There's a couple day games. We won't get into those at all. Let's talk about the totals on your evening slate. You got Yankees, Phillies, total of nine. Uh, Mariners, Orioles, nine and a half. D backs, Marlins, eight. Angels, Red Sox, nine and a half. A's, Tigers, nine. Pirates, Mets, seven and a half. Padres, Rangers, nine and a half. Twins, White Sox, nine. Indians, Cardinals, eight and a half. Cubs, Dodgers, seven and a half. Rockies, Giants, seven and a half. So we have three, four, five, six. Seven of the 11 games are eight and a half or above. So definitely a lot of offense. When we get to the pitching here in a second, it is bad pitching. So it makes a lot of sense when you see those totals. That's what we got. The other uh, interesting thing we have to worry about is a lot of, you know, weird weather. Weird, weird weather. Like wind's blowing out in Baltimore between the Mariners and the Orioles, but it's got a good, good chance of a lot of rain. Yankees, Phillies, wind's blowing out to the left there, 30% chances of rain. Uh, Angels, Boston blowing out to the left. Pittsburgh, the Mets blowing out to the left, 20% chance of rain. Oakland, Detroit, about 40% chance of rain dies off as the night goes on. San Diego, Texas blowing in from right center as it's been every day this week. We're talking 100, 103 degree weather, hot, hot, hot. It's a great hitting environment. So check uh, your, whoever you follow for weather, if it's Roth or someone else, or just check you know weather underground yourself, which is pretty easy. Um, lots of interesting rain. We had it yesterday. Some got delayed, some didn't, but everything got in, which is all that matters. So... Pay attention to that. It'll make things quite interesting. Well, let's talk pitchers on this slate. you got two guys at 10K or above. you got Madison Bumgarner and Robbie Ray. R- Ray making his return from the disabled list. Normally, I'd be all over Ray, but he made 65 pitches, I believe, his last time out. And he's supposed to, he was supposed to have one more rehab start. They're bringing him back a little early here. So you can only imagine about 80, 85 pitches. Not going to go super deep. Uh, so at 10K, it's hard to pay that price tag. If you're going up, you look at a guy like Madison Bumgarner, who's coming off an outstanding start his last time out against the San Diego Padres. Eight innings, three hits, nowhere in eight Ks for 35 points. That is the San Diego Padres. Just remember that. And uh, I know a lot of people were talking about his swinging strike rate still down uh, compared to the Mad Bum stats you you want to see. Um, it's 9.7% swinging strike this year. He saw the good ground ball rate, decent K rate. Rocky strike out 22% of the time versus lefties. Uh, it is risky. The ballpark definitely helps. The Rockies have the lowest total at 3.4. Lefties 222, righties 315 in a small sample. You saw Derek Collins stifle them yesterday. Uh, Mad Bum could be in there, that role today at 11-2 if you so choose to go that high. It's not necessary, though, so keep that in mind. Uh, the only other arm above 9K that I'm looking at is maybe a Jack Flaherty going up against the Cleveland Indians. Flaherty has been amazing this year, averaging 22 points at home. Coming off a 37.4 performance at Milwaukee, 21 to 1 against the Cub, 25 9 against San Diego. So 21 or more in three straight starts. Uh, really starting to click and get things going in a good, good way. It is a tough Cleveland team, there's no doubt about it. They strike out uh, 21.5% of the time versus right handed pitching. Flaherty's got 27% K rate, 45% ground ball rate. Does, does give up 35% hard contact, which is not ideal. But still a very good stuff. Uh, a total of 4.15 for the Indians. Lefties hit 308. Righties only 262 versus Flaherty. There are some lefties to worry about, of course. You know, you got Lindor and Ramirez and uh, Brantley and Alonzo and maybe Naquin, Chisholm. There's a lot of lefties in that lineup, a ton. But uh, it'll be super contrarian because people don't like to fade Cleveland. You can see they've been in a funk of late. They don't have their DH to worry about, which helps. So definitely give Flaherty a look, especially in your GPP tournaments. Go down a little farther. My favorite play on the slate, and it's scary to say that, is Kyle Gibson at eighty five hundred bucks at the Chicago White Sox. Gibson's been great this year. He's averaging twenty two point nine points on the road compared to eleven point two at home, an ERA of two on the road in his seven road starts compared to a four five three ERA and eight home starts. He's faced Chicago once this year, six and two thirds. Four hits, three earned, eight strikeouts for 21.4 DraftKings points, which was outstanding. His last few starts, he had 13 against Boston, but then 19-6 at Cleveland, 17-6 against the Angels, 20.4 at Cleveland, 28-2, 
against Kansas City. So, darn, darn good. Double digits in five straight. He's got basically 18 or more in four of five. And in a phenomenal matchup against the Chicago White Sox, a team with a 4-3 total. Lefty's 327, righty's 322 with a 304 well with 156 ISO, both basically average. Um, Gibson, uh, the White Sox strike out 25% of the time. First right-handed pitching, which is outstanding. Gibson's got his 50% ground ball rate. I like him a lot at 8500 bucks, and I'm a, I want, I'm worried he's going to be chalk on this slate because pitching's that bad, but he seems outstanding. You know, he's got that feel he's going to mow some guys down and have a big, big start. At 8400 bucks, you got Bieber, Shane Bieber, coming off 35-point performance against Detroit at 22-2 against Minnesota. The start prior, this will be his fourth start. He's going up against a St. Louis team that's kind of exploded the last couple days, so uh, might be a little trepidation for people. Uh, in your season-long leagues, Beaver was one of the top waiver wire pickups of the week. 24% K, or 23.5% K rate for the Cardinals. Beaver's got a 29% K rate, 12% swinging strike, 51% ground ball. It is a little scary that he's given up 45% hard contact. That does not spell happiness. The Cardinals have a 4.35 total. Lefty's 356. Righty's only 205. And the Cardinals throw a lot of righties out there. So that's one thing I really, really like looking at. So the K's are there. A lot of righties in the lineup. Gonna, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he gives up a home run or two. Just hopefully they're solo because that hard contact is terrifying. But Shane Bieber at 84 is a good SP2 or a good pivot off of Kyle Gibson if he is chalk in that area. We drop down to the sevens. It's nasty, nasty, nasty. And then we get to what's terrifying is Ivan Nova's $7,000 in a phenomenal matchup at the New York Mets. And this is likely, again, chalk because pitching is just bad today. Um, he, he coming off a 32.2 against Arizona, 16-7 and a 27-2. So 17 or more points in three straight starts, um, 14 or more in four of five. He's got strikeouts in his last two, which is really rare for Nova. For Nova. He's got eight Ks in two of his last three outings, and he's gone basically uh, five and two-thirds. He's only given up two runs combined in all of those starts. Going up against this Mets team that strikes out 21.5% of the time versus right-handed pitching. Nova, great ground ball rate as expected. The Mets have a 3.85 total. Lefty's 382, righty's 305. We know how slumpy they've been. If Nimmo's out, it makes this an even better play for me because you really only have like Conforto and Dribble Cabrera to really terrify you. In that lineup, so Ivan Nova at seven thousand, very much in play. And the last guy I'll mention here is Zach Wheeler at sixty three hundred against the Mets and that or against the uh, Pirates in that same matchup in New York. Seventeen points his last time out, twenty two and a half minus two point five, twenty two point two. So three or four straight really good starts. Part of that even a twelve point one, twelve point seven, twenty five three, five twenty one three. It, 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 it's the kind of gambles you want to take in this price range in the, in the sixes, especially low sixes, where you know it's risky. He could have those bad outings, but at the same time has that 20-plus point upside. Pittsburgh doesn't strike out a ton, a 19% K rate, but a, a tremendous ground ball weight rate for Wheeler. He's got a good K rate in himself. Pittsburgh's team's totals 3.65, lefties 362, righties 303, average Woba 308 and 152 ice, so both just barely above average. So Wheeler at 6300 bucks makes for a really nice player and a good pivot off of Yvonne Nova, even though Nova's got the better matchup of the two. Uh, there's Mike Miner, there's James Shields down there if you want to get super contrarian and risky, but those are the guys I'm looking at. So in the in the top 9K and above, you know, I got Flaherty and Bumgarner. In the 8Ks, I got Gibson and Bieber. And down below, I got Nova and Wheeler. So not the sexiest of matchups by any means, but that's where we are headed on this ugly 11 game slate before we get to the bats on this slate let me talk to you about draft Draft draft.com draft in your app store is a great way to play fantasy sports snake style drafts just the way you like them they got baseball we got golf teeing off tomorrow we have uh nfl best balls all kinds of great stuff try it out make first promo uh make your first deposit and use promo code sd sports checkout and you'll get entry into a free three dollar tournament if it's golf if it's baseball if it's a best ball for football, whatever you want, they've got it. So go check it out, draft.com, draft in your app store, promo code SD Sports at checkout for entry into a free $3 tournament. Now the bats on this 11-game slate. You got guys like Buster Posey at 4,200 versus Freeland. Posey's been great. He's hitting the crap out of the ball. He doesn't hit with a ton of power consistently, so 42 is hard to pay for him. Just wanted to point that out to everybody. Uh, Yadi Molina, if you are fading Bieber, is in a good spot here. This hard contact. Uh, $3,900 is not the worst play in the world. 
But I like to slide down a little farther. Nick Hundley, if he's in the lineup at 36 for his Freeland, he's been hitting pretty decent when he's getting his starts. Uh, John Ryan Murphy, 3,500 versus Wee and Chen. Chen's going to be a heavy target today. D-backs have a 4-4 total. Lefty's 272. Righty's 346. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest ballpark to hit him, but I think the D-backs, you know, they have the was it 2 4 like the 11th lowest or they're in the middle of the pack 11th highest total I guess glass half full type person on the slate and they're in a phenomenal matchup against uh, Wee and Chen so they're going to be someone that'll help fill out some lineups for you if you believe in Robinson Torino he's 3400 versus Clayton Richards Texas has a total of just below 5 lefty's 278 righty's 342 so he's very much in play for you as well uh, when you get down to the low threes and move into the, um, you got Chris Iannetta at 3,100 with Fading Bumgarner or Tom Murphy who's hit lefties just fine. They're both uh, contrarian plays against Bumgarner who, he's been hittable. I hate to say it, the Rockies, I just don't like the Rockies in that ballpark, but it's super, super, I'd rather be contrarian with the Padres even though they probably aren't going to be contrarian again tonight because Mike Miner's on the mound. So I guess we'll, we'll pick and choose and this is a great topic for the Slack chat later on. But uh, as you slide down these ranges, maybe an Omar Navarro is a 2,800 versus uh, Gibson if you're not going the Gibson route. He's in play for you. Um, the one dude I do like, uh, you got the Minnesota catchers in Garver and Wilson. But Christian Vasquez, we, we talked about him in the Slack chat. He was the value play. He was 2,600. He went deep yesterday. Is he going to go deep every game? Hell no. We know that's a reality. But, um, you know, here's his game logs. 19-0, 10-0, 7-0, 0-0, 6-10. When he goes off, he goes off. But he can put up those zeros, and that's why he's priced where he's at. Facing Andrew Heaney, Boston's got the highest total at 5.1. Lefty's 234, righty's 335. So a guy like Christian Vasquez at 26 brings that value. Same with the guy like Chris Herman. 2,600 for Seattle. Left-handed bat. Catcher outfield eligible. He's 2,600. Uh, Seattle's got a 4.8 total, fifth highest on the slate. Lefty's 388, righty's 333 off Cobb. If you're uh, looking for another cheap option at Herman at 26, I like that as well. So Herman and Vasquez, both nice cheapies you can look at in um, in your lineups for catcher's position. Let's go over to first base. You're going to have guys like Goldie at 54 versus Chen, which is outstanding. That is just a phenomenal, phenomenal play. Max Muncy continues to get it done. He's 4,700 and in play for you yet again. Like me some Carlos Santana, 4,600 against Luis Sessa. Philadelphia has a team total of 4.4. Sessa's kind of uh, spot starting it. He's been out of the bullpen for the most part. Um, if you look at Sessa's game logs, I'll get them for you real quick. Because he's 5,900, relief pitcher eligible. Um, you know, he went like two innings on the 22nd. Two innings on the set. Uh, he's only had one appearance on the 22nd. The rest were in April. So uh, they're stretching him out. Who knows how long he goes in the Yankees bullpen. Obviously, no joke, but middle relief is a little different. So, Carlos Santana can be interesting at 4,600. You got guys like Cody Bellinger at 45 versus Hendricks. He's in play for you there. Uh, Matt Olson, though, against Mike Fires at 44. Absolutely love that. The A's are a really, really solid play tonight. Total of 4.7 for Oakland. Lefty's 344. Righty's 332 off Fires. Just watch the weather, of course. But a guy like Matty Olson at 44 could definitely be in for a good one. Uh, Ian Desmond versus Bumgarner. GPPs at 4K. You can get behind that. Jose Martinez at $3,800. He went deep yesterday. Again, if you're believing in that hard contact stuff, Jose's a good play. 18 or more points in two of his last three. So that, that's a nice value at $3,800. You go down a little more, though. You got like Yonder Alonso at 37 Greg Bird's 38 versus Zach Eflin, if you're looking for some value there. Um, other than that, you know, maybe a Josh Bell at 34 The best value on the, on the first base position, though, are one of the better values is Logan Morrison. He was hitting cleanup yesterday. He got zero points, but, you know, it's Lomo. It's what he does. He's slowly heating up. I mentioned those ex-Woba numbers yesterday. He's 3300 bucks for his big game, James, and that definitely becomes on the radar as a value play at first base. Don't hate that at all. Going over to second base, Matty Carpenter at 47. He just keeps doing it. Went deep again yesterday. He's a great play. Second base, third base eligible. Matty Carp at 47. You got Cesar Hernandez is in play. Javi Baez went deep again yesterday. He's 4500 bucks. He had 42 DraftKings points last night. The dude is just insanely good right now. I he, I totally whiffed on him. A few of us have. We talked about it. It's been he, he made a lot of us eat some crow. But uh, when you look at the Cubbies, lefty's 236, righty's 332 off Alex Wood. So a guy like Javi Baez at that price point of 45 could be a very interesting play. 
Same with D. Gordon at 44 and Jed Lowry at 43. I prefer Jed Lowry against Mike Fires, but both are in play in their matchups. Uh, you go down farther, Glaber Torres at 4K is worth a look for uh, Zach Eflin. Uh, Drew Cabrera at 39, but uh, Brian Dozier, still really, really cheap. He's 3800 bucks. He went deep yesterday. You know, he's not having the best of years. You know, 14, 3, 8, 3, 7, 19. He might be slowly getting together. You're not seeing as many zeros as you once saw. It's still not ideal. But you got a Twins team with a 4.7 total. Lefty's 347. Righty's 354 off big game James. So Brian Dozier at 38 could definitely be worth a look at that price point. Some big upside in a GPP for you there. When you go down farther at the position, like Ian Kinsler's 36 versus Rick Porcello. Um, Alan Hansen, 35 versus Freeland for some value. Uh, Nico Goodrum at 35. Told you I liked him yesterday. He's just cheap. He's 35, second base outfield. Uh, he had 15 points yesterday. Uh, one for three with an RB, a two-run double. He, he's got that boomer bust type potential at 3,500. We like in our GPPs. Uh, other than that, we'll check lineups. There will be some values that pop up down below, but nothing extremely crazy just yet. Third base, you got Aaron Otto at 57. It's always worth a look. Same with Jose Ramirez at 55. Not plays I'm running to on this slate, but not bad. I'd rather kind of run to like Eduardo Escobar at 47 against big game James, Matt Carpenter, Max Muncy. Those guys are all in play for me at 47. You drop down farther, though, you got guys like Adrian Beltre, 4K versus uh, Garrett, or not Garrett Richards, um, Clayton Richard. So I think uh, Beltre is a very solid look there at 4,000. We know Christian Villanueva for San Diego hits lefties well. He's 4K versus Mike Miner. Farther down, he looked at like a Heimer Condelario at 39, like a lot below 4K against a guy like Bassett. Bassett's just not very good. Detroit's team total is 4-3. Lefty's 287, righty's 361. Problem is the Tigers aren't good either, but we saw them blow up on uh, Montas yesterday, so maybe they have another one in their pocket today. A good value play at 3,800 is uh, Kyle Seeger against Alex Cobb. We've mentioned the lefties. we mentioned everybody hits Cobb. Seeger went deep yesterday, 21 DraftKings points. Uh, very much a good look again versus Cobb tonight at 3,800. A little farther down, like a Brian Anderson at 36 versus Robbie Ray. Uh, we mentioned Alan Hansen already at, at 35. Yolmer Sanchez at 34 is always a guy you can look at for value. Um, Colin Moran at 33 versus, versus Wheeler is definitely in play. Louis Valbuena at 32 as a punt GPP type play as well. And then Danny Valencia. Talked about him yesterday versus Paxton. He likes hitting lefties. He went deep. He's 3200 bucks versus Wade LeBlanc. Uh, nice cheap option as well. Kind of how we feel about Lomo at first. Valencia at third is a very nice look uh, in that spot for value. Shortstop, you got Frenchie Lindor at 54 is always worth a look. But Machado at 5K versus LeBlanc, we like quite a bit. LeBlanc's been hit and miss good this year. Again, coming off a bad start his last time out. Baltimore at their 4.75 total. Lefties 333, righties 349 versus LeBlanc. So Machado could be in for a good one. He's been a little quiet overall of late, so keep him in mind. Segura is always in play of Bogarts. But again, Eduardo Escobar, 4700 bucks. I like him a lot tonight. I think he's in a great spot versus big game James to do some damage. Uh, you got Javi Baez at 45. Shortstop is expensive, but they've been performing great this year. Trevor Story, 4400 bucks uh, against Mad Bum. But Elvis Andrus is 4K versus Richard. I like that quite a bit at that price point. Brandon Crawford's 38. He can't hit lefty, so don't be scared off too much by that. Um, but then it gets quiet again when you get farther down the list like it's been lately. You know, Kiki Hernandez is hitting lefties and righties. Got 10 more points last night. He's 3400 If you need a cheap one there, you could go that direction. Uh Adrianza from Minnesota is only 31. That's one of the cheaper ones I definitely do like. Can definitely see me playing some of that. Maybe some Scott Kingery at 3K. And then um, where'd you, where are you at down here? Keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I must have been past him. Where are you at, little buddy? Our buddy Miguel Rojas for Miami. There he is. He's 3K as well. Third base shortstop Bells. Welcome up as a lefty. Robbie Ray is another value you can look at there. But Adrianza at 31 is a pretty good one at that price point. Outfield, Mookie Betts, 6K, had a huge night last night. He's got a great spot again against Heaney tonight. You got Trout at 59, J.D. Martinez at 56, loves his lefties. He went deep last night. I had a Betts-Martinez lineup, and it went very, very well. I wouldn't mind that again tonight. Nelly Cruz was scratched yesterday with back spasms. If he's in the lineup at 55 versus Cobb, he's definitely in play. But be concerned about those back spasms a little bit. I do love me some Eddie Rosario at 53. I love an Escobar Rosario one-two punch in Minnesota. You can even sprinkle Dozier in at 3800 bucks. Have a nice little threesome in Minnesota for you there. Odubel Herrera at 52 versus Sessa's in play. 
Um, Reese Hoskins at 5K is very, very nice. The only thing, I love the Phillies. I love the matchup versus Sessa. We just have to be careful because you don't know how far Sessa is going to go, and then you don't know what relievers they're going to bring in. Do you lose platoon advantages, so on and so forth. It changes it a little bit for you. When you scroll down some more, though, you guys got like Mitch Hanniger at 47. Definitely like that. Um, in that matchup, Justin Upton's okay at 46. My, uh, Will Myers struggling since coming off the DL, but he's 45 versus Mike Miner coming from the right side there. Could be a decent play. I mentioned Cody Bellinger earlier. Uh, Denard Spann again at 4300 bucks versus Alex Cobb. A nice price tag on that one. Nick Castellanos, 43 Not bad either. You got Jock Jams at 43 I, I liked him when he was cheaper, but still GPP home run play. I get it. I definitely get it. You drop down to the low fours and move your way into the 39 range. You got Austin Meadows at 4K. I do like that a lot. Um, Hunter Renfro at 39 can keeps getting it done. He's in a really good spot here as minor. He'd be in play for me. Adam Jones at 39 versus LeBlanc as well. Andrew McCutcheon at 39 versus Freeland. So three good plays there. I'd go Renfro, Jones, McCutcheon in that order if you so choose. And then Manny Margot at 38. I absolutely love tonight. I think that's a phenomenal play. Should be in a lot of lineups if you're not using minor as being contrarian. Conforto at 38 went deep yesterday. Maybe he's going to start swinging it again. We shall see. Marcelo Zuna, if you're fading Bieber at 37, the hard contact versus hard contact, because Zuna's been hitting a lot of hard contact. We know Bieber's given up a lot, so it's a very interesting matchup there. Guys like Steven Piscotti and Dustin Fowler, if they're in good spots in their lineup against Mike Fires at 37, uh, Fowler leading off makes him in play. Piscotti, if he's in the middle of that order with some thump, also worth a look. If Ben Gamble cracks lineup at 36, you can go there. But Gorky Hernandez at 36 keeps getting it done. Another good night last night. Facing the lefty Freeland tonight. You know, Gorky's another 18 points last night. 18, 14, 7, 12, you know, a 2, a 7, a 26. Gork's really getting it done. People keep waiting for that shoe to drop, and maybe it will eventually. But uh, right now, he's getting it done, and uh, I definitely like him tonight at that price point. I mentioned Brian Anderson earlier. Uh, Nico Goodrum at 35, mentioned him already. Jose Perella, another cheapie for San Diego. Second base outfield eligible at 34 against Mike Miner. So, yeah, San Diego's in play again. Uh, you got Kiki Hernandez at 34, talked about him already. Uh, Max Kepler is a nice cheapie at 33 versus James Shields. I like that quite a bit. Uh, when you look at the cheaper options there, that's really, really solid stuff. Uh, keep sliding down to threes. I love our, our Chad Pender play went deep yesterday against the lefty, but Matt Joyce, if he's hitting towards the top of that order at 33 versus fires, very much in play for you tonight as a cheaper option. I kind of like, uh, I like our boy, uh, th- 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 uh, where do you go? Max Kepler a little more than Joyce, but both very much in play in their matchups with that $3,300 price tag. So there's value in a lot of these positions in the low threes and their pitching is not great. So you're not going to be spending a ton on pitching. So, overall, it should be pretty good. But uh, check your lineups. Like Robbie Grossman, 3K is worth a look. Other than that, check your lineups. We will get some more value popping around the league. Let's recap your pitching real quick. You got, you know, Flaherty and Bumgarner at 9K and above. In the 8Ks, you got Gibson and Bieber. And then 7K and below, you got Nova and Zach Wheeler. So, not the sexiest of slates, but there are options out there. Let's go to the BVP on this slate. Uh, you got Mike Zanino, 4 for eight, the double and a homer off of Alex Cobb. Nelson Cruz, 6 for 20 with a double and a homer. Uh, Ian Kinsler, 11 for 22, a double and a triple off Porcello. Calhoun, 7 for 22, two homers. Pujols, 10 for 29, three doubles and a homer. Emerson Simmons, 5 for 17 with a homer. Trout, 9 for 32, two homers. Valbuena's taking them deep. As a team, the Angels are hitting 299 with a 348 Woba and a 183 ISO off of Rick Porcello. So the Angels could be a little contrarian action for you there if you so choose. Uh, Lucroy, Kana, and Lowry have all taken fires deep for the A's. Joey Bats, if you believe he's starting to turn things around, he's 9 for 29, three doubles and a homer off Nova. I'll sit and watch if he does well. Tip my cap. Uh, John Ryan Murphy, 3 for 9 with a homer off Wee and Chen. He was a one of the pricier catchers, I did say, is in a good spot for you tonight. Uh, Moncada, two for three, two doubles. Yomer Sanchez, four for 14, two doubles. Abreu's taking Kyle Gibson deep as a whole. They're only hitting 213. Nothing crazy at all. The 252 Woba and a 117 ISO. So both below average. Gibson's done well against Chicago. But on the other hand, against big game James, Adrianza has gone deep in a small sample. But you got Dozier hitting 310, 13 for 42, five doubles, four home runs. So nine extra base hits. Lomo, eight for 27, three doubles and a homer. 
Eddie Rosario's gone deep. Mauer's gone deep. Eduardo Escobar's gone deep. They're hitting with a 346 Woba and a 200 ISO versus Big Game James. So, yes, yes, you can you can play the Twins. We like them tonight. We like them a lot. Um, Joe Panic 7 for 12 with a double off Freeland. Gorky, 6 for 15 with a homer. Hundley, 5 for 14, two doubles and a homer. Those are kind of some guys I mentioned there. Cargo, 19 for 59, four doubles and five homers off Mad Bumps, a 322 average. Arenado, 8 for 35, two doubles, two homers, only at 229. But uh, they've had some success versus Mad Bum. Definitely have had some success versus Mad Bum. So something to keep in mind there. But, you know, as we said, you're going to have your typical stacking subjects. You're going to have your, your Boston Red Sox, you know, um, Texas Rangers are in a great spot. The right-handed bats versus Clayton Richards. Something to definitely think about there. We, when you look a little deeper and try to be a little different, I love the Twins play against James Shields. Um, you know, Mariners against Cobb could be really, really nice. A's versus Fires in a great spot as well. And you, you got some Padres and Angels and D-backs to make things a little different also. So definitely some ways you can mix and match. Pitching is not great. Um, you don't have any birthdays to worry about. Nothing special today. So should be a fun one. But uh, 11 games. Don't go crazy because it is ugly. But you never know. So check us out, thesportsdgens.com, at thesportsdgens. We've got a lot coming up for your golf need for the uh, quick and loans tomorrow. The always pressing PGA DFS pod with myself and Jesse is out. Jesse's DFS picks are out. I currently have Rob, uh, his cash game plays in my inbox. We'll have the OADs out later today. So a lot going out as usual. A lot of other great baseball content out there uh, from Freeze and and uh, Andrew and Dana and Brian and all that good stuff. So go check all that out. I got a bench with Bubba with Paul Martin, episode 103. Really good fantasy baseball talk. A lot of Yankees and prospect talk. Just recorded uh, Bench with Bubba episode 104 last night. Best ball talk with Mike Beers at Beerswater, one of the best in the NFL best ball game. So that should be dropping hopefully later today, if not first thing tomorrow. So go check all that out. Lots of great, great stuff. But uh, give us a check on uh, Twitter at the Sports DGens. I am at BD Entrick. Join us in the Slack chat if you have any questions. But uh, good luck. This was MLB DFS Quick Hits, your Wednesday, June 27th edition. I'm out. <laughs>